live without me Lord Whatever You're doing In this season Don't do without me Without me Singing Lord Whatever You're doing In this season, season Don't do it without don't me Don't do it without me Don't do it without me Don't do it without me Singing Lord Whatever, whatever you're doing, doing in the sea, please don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. to be praised. We certainly thank God for another Sunday morning miracle service. And we'd like to wish all the fathers a very happy Father's Day. Amen. And we thank God for where would we be without a father. Amen. Amen. Life begins with a father. Amen. And we thank God for our fathers naturally and spiritually. Amen. We thank God for those of you who are in the sanctuary. We thank God for those who are watching via internet. Whatever you need, God's got it. Amen. I serve a big God. He's big enough to meet every need and grant every request. Amen. Whatever your desire is of the Lord, God will do it for you. Amen. Amen. Everybody know anybody know that everything that happened to you, God did it. Amen. Come on, 
Если я прогнозу на отношу на любовь. Everything that happened to me that was good or good. Yes, we did. Oh, yes, we I said that everything that happened to me that was good, the Lord did it. Yes, we did. Oh, yes, he did. He picked me up and turned me all around. He placed my feet on solid ground. Everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did. I say that everything that happened to me that was good, the Lord did it. Yes, He did it. I said everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Oh, yes, He did it. Once I was lost in a world of sin, but Jesus came and He took me right on in. So everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Yes, He did. Well, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Yes, He did. I said everything that happened to me that was good, the Lord did it. Yes, He did. God did it. Oh yes, He did it. Oh, yes, Come on. God did it. Yes, He did. I said God did it. Yes, He did. God did it. Yes, He did. God did it. Yes, He did. Can I hear you say yeah? Yes, He did it. Can I hear you say yeah?
Let me sing you from the street. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. I didn't know how. God did it. And I didn't know how. Y'all not going to help me this morning. God did it. Have you ever had something on the line? I wish I would talk to the right people because y'all act like y'all, God ain't never done nothing for you. God did it. It wasn't me. It wasn't you. I know we think we all that in the back. Y'all not going to help me. But God did it. God did it. I said, well, God, that'll do it. You know what I mean? I said, well, noble God. He'll come and see about you. I don't have to run to the statue. Come on, somebody. I can take my God everywhere. He's not limited to this place, this building, this experience. God did it. God did it. Yes, he did. And I don't have anything bad to say about him. I don't plan on being before you very long this morning. I just want to read a few scriptures and allow the Lord to do what he's going to do in this hour. First scripture will be coming from Matthew, the 11th chapter. Verse 11 and verse 20. I'll read both of them. Verse 11 of Matthew. I'm sorry. It's actually Mark, the 11th chapter. Amen. Amen. Mark, the 11th chapter. We get it together. I'm still excited about what God did. Amen. 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 I'm excited about God and the things of God. Eleventh chapter of Mark. Eleven verse. The fig tree is rebuked. He says, and Jesus entered into Jerusalem. And into the temple. And we had looked around about all things. And now the even tide was come. He went out into Bethany with the twelve. And on the morrow they were come from Bethany and was hungry. And seeing a tree, a fig tree afar off, having leaves. He came happily, he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the times of the figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man shall eat fruit of this tree hereafter forever and he and his disciples heard it first and foremost I want to bring to your attention that after Jesus had been in Jerusalem he had taken out on a journey and then sometimes on this way or pathway of life we will experience a lack or a need y'all not going to help me this point And in your lack or your need, the worst thing is to see what you need afar off. And then when you get up on it, realize that they don't have what you need. 
It's the same thing that's happening even in the church. We look at the building to far off, it looked like a church. You stand in the parking lot, you hear the music, it sounds like a church. Then when you get into the house of God, it don't feel like a church. <laughs> and you don't meet your need. Our Lord and Jesus found himself in a place or a predicament where night had come and he was hungry and he was in need of something to eat. And seeing this tree afar off, it was beautiful. It had plenty of leaves on it, but it didn't have any fruit. We live in a day such in the kingdom. We've got plenty of people preaching it, and it sounds good. It makes you feel good, but it doesn't produce any fruit. Amen. Amen. I believe Jesus got frustrated. He got angry. He cursed the tree. He said, no man shall ever eat of this tree again. I don't know how pretty, I don't care how pretty it looks or how good it makes you feel. If it don't produce any fruit on it, it ain't no good. Come on, somebody. You didn't plant your rose bush in your yard for the leaves. Y'all not going to help me this morning. You planted your rose bush in the yard because at some point you want to go outside and see some beautiful roses. You didn't plant those tomato vines in the backyard because you like the way the leaves look. Come on, somebody. At some point, come on, spring's going to come. Summer's going to come. Fall's going to come. Harvest time is going to come. And you're going to want to go outside and have a tomato. We as the church of the Most High God have got to get back connected to God in such a way that we just don't look good but we have no fruit. We don't we sound good but we don't have no fruit. We use our anointing as a form, as a we take on our anointing as a career. Come on, somebody. And we acknowledge ourselves as professional preachers and we're revivalists and conference hosts and call me. I want to preach at your church. I want to raise you a lot of off. You're not going to help me this morning. No food. We got the same down pat. We got the look down pat. The tree look good. The Bible lets us know it had plenty of leaves on it. <laughs> but it didn't have no fruit. Where's your fruit? I'm going to preach on a little bit. And in the 20th verse, it says, And in the morning, they passed by. They saw the fig tree drive up from the root. And Peter called into the remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which you cursed is withered away. And Jesus said unto them to have faith in God. The disciples said, now that you cursed it, what are we supposed to eat? Y'all not going to hear me. What are we going to eat from? Y'all not going to help me. See, we're putting too much of our confidence in something that ain't even producing food anyway. You got more confidence in your old man and he ain't paying the rent no way. Y'all not going to help me this morning. You bringing home the bacon, she ain't frying it anyway. Have faith in God. Matthew 5. I'm going backwards. Praise the Lord. Matthew 7, excuse me. 7, 15 to 20. Jesus says it like this in the 7th chapter of Matthew. It says, Beware of false prophets which come in in sheep clothes, but inwardly they are raven wolves. 
essentially what the scripture is saying, just like the fig tree, it looked good. We've got to be careful that we don't get so caught up in how it look that we forget what it's supposed to be doing. Amen. Don't let the collar, see, I call them spiritual costumes anyway. Because anybody can go buy a robe and a collar and a gold chain and a gold ring and some alligator shoe. Y'all not going to help me this morning. But when you open up your mouth, what's coming out is it producing fruit. And I can preach it in a, a, a robe, or I can preach it in a, a dashiki. It's got to produce fruit. Right, right. And they go down there to the uh, suit store and they get a robe. Y'all not going to help me here. You can go to the bookstore and get you a piece of paper and call yourself a... Yes. You can go online and get you some license. Y'all not going to help me this morning. Yes. Be real. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and there be that find it. It goes on and says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep clothing but inwardly are raven wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruit. Not by what they say. Not by what they do. Not by who they know. You know, I, I used to preach with Bishop Neville Jones. I used to sing in the choir with body people. Y'all not going to hear me here. Yes. Don't be impressed by what I call them spiritual resumes. Yes. Well, I was a member of uh, the Church of the Most High God. Y'all not going to hear me here. And I did this. And I did that. And I have I did this. The Bible said, you're going to say, I saved this one. I laid hands on this one and he was healed. But then at the end, he's going to say, depart from me. I know you not, you workers of iniquity. Mm-hmm. And the sad part about it, there are people that are preaching and there are going to be hundreds of people saved, thousands of people delivered, millions of people are set free, and they still don't even believe the words that are coming out of their very mouth. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes and thorns or figs and thistles? Ever, even so very good, tree bringeth forth good fruits. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth what? Evil fruit. It's some of us that we're producing. Come on now. But you got to identify what you're producing. There's different types of mushrooms. You don't go out there and eat that mushroom that's growing out there by that tree. That one's poison. Y'all not going to hear me here. Just because it look good to you, don't mean it's going to taste good to you. I tell y'all all all the time when my grandmother told me about going out there messing with her pear tree, they would be so beautiful while they were on the tree. We would try to go out there and we would sneak and get one. And then we would bite into it. It would be so hard that you couldn't even bite it. But it looked good. But it wasn't right. It wasn't ready. So don't allow nobody to cause you to get off your vine when you ain't ready. Don't allow nobody to disconnect you when it's not your time. I'm not saying that you're not a prophet. I'm not saying that you're not an evangelist. I'm not saying God, I'm not calling you or anointing you or consecrating you to be a bishop. But sometimes it's just not your time. Yes. Yes. It's okay. With, you got to be okay with that. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Of course I would like this, that, and the other. But if God don't ever give it to me, I'm all right right where I am. Some he gave three. Come on, somebody. Some he gave two. And some he gave one. What are you doing with what God has assigned for you to do? Amen. Don't be so focused on, oh, I'm going down in Ethiopia. I'm going down in Kenya. Come on, somebody. There's plenty of people around here on Washington Road that need the word of God. 
Plenty of people in East Point need the word of God. Plenty of people in College Park need Jesus. Plenty of people in Riverdale need Jesus. Come on, somebody. There are plenty of holy folks in East Point. Yeah. I'm going down. Who oh, I got to get this money down? Because I'm getting ready to go to Kenya and feed some. Ho- Come on, bye. And you won't feed nobody at your own kitchen table. Charity starts at home, then it goes abroad. I think that we in Kingdom have got it backwards. We're trying to save the world, and we ain't even got a house in order yet. Amen. Amen. Get your house in order first. It's your house in order, then you can run God's house. How you gonna do God's business and you can't even handle your business? Even a good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. And a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Huh. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's such a nice person. Y'all not going to Can't be nice and everything come out of your mouth is evil. Amen. Oh, he's such a mean person. Come on, somebody. So if you mean, if that's your countenance, that's your persona, that's your character, you can't expect good things to come from somebody that's mean and evil and vicious. Amen. Just like you can't expect fresh water. Come on, come on, somebody. Amen. Sweet water from a bitter fountain. It don't work that way. Right if you got hard water... <laughs> You can't expect it. Come on, somebody. Jesus instructs us. He gives us very instructions. He says, Every tree that bringeth forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits shall you know them. In other words, you can tell about how a person is, not on a good day. Come on, somebody here. But you can tell the countenance of a person when they're going through a fire. Amen. Amen. You, you can't get happy and be excited about the marriage in the first 30 days, of course, because you're still on the honeymoon. But when the adversity comes, because I don't care who you are, where you are, Life is going to happen, and it's going to be some trying times. That's how you're going to find out when a person really there for you, really love you, really care for you. Come on, somebody here. If they see you thirsty, will they give you a bottle of water? Come on, somebody. Or will they avoid you until they know you've had enough time for somebody else to give you some water? And then they show up and say, well, if I'd have been here, I would have got you some water. Amen. Amen. We all know those people that avoid us. I ain't going to call around this time because I know y'all not going to. The Bible, Holy Spirit won't have us to be ignorant. And when the Lord shows you and reveals you stuff, sometimes he he don't reveal it to you to tell everybody. Sometimes he'll show me things just so I know how to to walk. Come on, somebody. How to tread. Come on. I said, don't tell them your business because you're here again. Y'all not going to. If you go run down somebody and say, oh, you know, they talk too much. No. He didn't tell you to do that. He showed you that so you know how to handle it. Amen. That's right. John 15. Last scripture. John 15, 15 and 16. When you preach... This is just a little FYI. When you're preaching, don't just write down the book, chapter, verse. Also write down the page number so that when you're up here, you can go right to it. Amen. Amen. John 15 and 15 and 16 in my book, it's page 698. <laughs> Amen. God is such a great God. And we've got to be in a place in God. 
Well, we got to ask God to allow us to produce some fruit. Come on, somebody here. Because the tree ain't no good if it don't serve no purpose with just leaves on it. I said, you got to get stop being so excited about people co- wanting to connect with you and be a part of what you're doing when all they got is leaves anyway. Come on now. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All they are is leaves. And after a while, guess what a leaf going to do? It's going to fall out. Amen. Y'all be fruitful Amen. this morning. Thank you, Lord. That wasn't even on this piece of paper. You got to know what God was serious with me about this thing. I wrote it down. I usually don't even write this thing down. You got to be careful that you don't connect with a leaf and that you get connected with something that's rooted and grounded in God so that when the wind comes and the rain comes and the birds come and the squirrel come, y'all not going to hear me. See, the leaves you see, but what's rooted and grounded, you don't know what's going on. But you do know it's growing. Come on. John 15. 15 and 16. He said, Wherefore I've called you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth. But I call you a friend. See, God is <laughs> so God. The Lord Jesus was speaking to his disciples, and he said, I don't call you a servant. I call you a friend. And the reason why I'm going to call you my friend is because a servant and a, and a servant-lord relationship, the Lord is not, or the master is not obligated to tell the servant what he's doing, what he's going to do, why he's going to do it. But when you have a friend and you're on a friend relationship, you can speak back and forth to your friend. You can ask questions to your friend. You can call your friend. Come on, somebody. Yeah. He said, I don't call you servant. I call you friend. And is your relationship, are you a friend or are you just a servant? Do you know him as a friend? Can you relate to him? Can he relate to you? Do you know what he, do you know what God is doing in this hour? Huh. Do you know what God is saying in this hour? Do you know how God is moving in this hour? Has he spoken to you? Have you spoken to your friend lately? When you have a friend, sometimes when you have a real friend, you call him, you don't even really want nothing. You know, you know. Come on, somebody. I can call one of my more house brothers. I ain't heard him. Hey, how's it going? What's going on? You know, I don't want nothing. I'm just calling to say hi, check on you, make sure you're all right. That's what a friend to do. But a servant will only come, approach the master when he's in need or he needs instruction or he has a certain goal or he has a certain uh, a purpose or a plan that he has to communicate with his servant. He said, for all things that I have heard of my father, I have even made it known unto you. I said to God, he won't keep no secrets. He won't hold the trump card on you. Come on, somebody here. He won't pull a fast one on you. If he say he going to hear you, he going to hear you. If the Lord say he going to deliver you, he going to deliver you. If he say he going to bring you out, he going to bring you out. Come on, somebody. If he going to make a way for you out of no way, he will make the way for you out of no way. Amen. That's right. Honey, he don't hold one hand behind his back. Come on, somebody. Yes, yes. I said the up front God. Mm-hmm. You don't have to figure out what he going to do. Come on, somebody. He's so God, he left everything in writing. I made it known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Yes, yes. This ain't you chose me. I've chose you. You are one of God's elect. Come on, somebody. Yes, yes. 
God has chose you. God has created you. Jeremiah told you, I don't even know you even from your mother's womb. Right. For you saw yourself in the mirror. He already knew what you were going to look like. Yeah. And not only did I chose you, but I ordained you. God ordained you. I'm not talking about no papers. I'm not talking about no bishop. I'm not talking about no apostle calling you. Come on, somebody here. Yeah. This ain't on no buddy plan. Because I like you. I'm going to redeem you. Because I like the way you preach. I'm going to promote you. Come on, somebody here. Amen. Because when you really ordain to God, the paperwork don't do nothing for you anyway. Sometimes the paperwork ain't nothing but validation. Or because God is the one that really do the ordaining, not the man. Mm-hmm. God ordained you. That you shall what? Go and bring forth what? Fruit. Yes. That's the same right there if you ordained or not. If you ordained to make cakes, and you can get in that kitchen, and you can produce a what? Cake. If you ordain to work with children, if you can go in that classroom and all them crazy kids sit down and listen. That's right. That's right. Produce the food. Yeah. Don't call you, don't go around calling yourself a prophet. If you're a real prophet of God, just prophesy. Mm-hmm. And make sure you hear the voice of God and be accurate. Your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men. Yes. You're free to do that. Because somebody will be hungry enough for it. Because yes. the harvest is plenty. But the laborers. Huh, ain't nobody want to put in the work. Come on somebody. Yes. You tell me you want a brand new house. You know, a three acre yard. You forget about the fact. Who going to cut that yard? <laughs> Who going to trim them hedges? Who going to weed out the God? You're not going to. We want the harvest, but there are so many things that are associated with the harvest. Who going to water the harvest? Who going to fertilize the harvest? Who going to break up the ground? Who going to get out there and pick the weeds and make sure that they don't choke out the harvest? Y'all know that. That you should that your fruit bring forth fruit that your fruit should remain see what happens is when you bring forth fruit fruit produces more what? seeds See, what God gives you is a seed. And if you put the seed in the ground, you'll produce a harvest. And out of that harvest, you get more seed. Come on, somebody here. So if you had one acre harvest this year, if you produce fruit and have enough seed, you should at least have some more harvest next year than you did last year. So when things happen and other people begin, you see other people begin to produce a harvest, a harvest can be traced back to its seed. The apple tree came from the apple seed. Now if you didn't put no seed in the ground, you ain't going to get no apple tree. I can't get mad at you. Because when you say, you know, we're going to go down there to the Home Depot and we're going to get some tomato seeds. Come on, somebody here. And you gave me $10 to get $10 worth of seeds. I went on here and went to the Kroger and got me some tomato. Y'all not going to. <laughs> y'all not going to help me here. I want y'all to understand the power of being fruitful with what God has given you. 
So then I take my tomatoes, I take my little tomatoes and I go home and I make a salad and I eat and I get full for that moment. But if I was patient enough and I waited long enough and I prayed hard enough and I cried long enough and I was faithful long enough and I went out there and I watered it and I went out there and I weeded it out, I would have enough I would never have enough harvest that I would never have to step foot in a Kroger again looking for some tomato to go on top of my salad. Amen. All right. Amen. Be fruitful. Be productive. Produce something. Find what God is really ordained for you to do and do that. God got, everybody got a place. There are many members, but one body. Somebody got to mop the floor up in here. Yes. It's just as somebody got to take the trash out. So when the people come, they don't smell garbage when they hit the door. You are just as important. You are just as important. Everybody got a place. Everybody got a purpose. What happens is we try to do too many things. An apple seed don't call one purpose. It's just going to produce apples. Whatever your call is, whatever your anointing is. Now, God uses people to do a whole lot of things. Yes, I can sing. Yes, I can preach. Yes, I can pray. Come on, somebody here. But we don't all, I don't have to do everything. If everybody do, they. Amen. 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 I can't preach and usher at the same time. (laughs) Come on. We all got a part to play. Have you ever heard of a one man choir? I can't sing alto, tenor, and soprano at the same time. I don't care how good you sing. Everybody's got a part. And as a believer, you've got to produce some fruit. There are some people that pass the problem and never reach, and you will never listen to. Come on, somebody here. But they'll receive from you, they know your lifestyle. They see you every day at work. Come on, somebody here. They see that you're not moved by the wind. You're not a leaf. Come on, somebody here. You moved by the wind. Come on, somebody. Okay, how st- I don't care how strong the storm comes. Come on, somebody. When that wind gets to blow, when that power was on that tree, that wind was blowing, it'll lean left, it'll lean right. But guess what? It ain't coming off. Those fruit on that tree were so connected that they did not fall off until they were ripe. Y'all not going to hear me here. Until it was their season. Yeah. And some of us, we're allowing people to operate in our life, and it ain't even their season. You're eating off season word. Y'all not going to hear me here. Off season. Y'all eating watermelon in December. Y'all not going to hear me here. Watermelon season is in July. Okay. The Bible says, for this cause, let a man examine himself. And every now and then, you're going to have to get in that mirror, and you're going to have to examine yourself. They sing the song, it's not my mother, it's not my father, but it's me, oh Lord. I'm standing in the need of prayer. Now, God, I asked you to look on these people, everybody under the sound of my voice. Lord, we ask you to cause them to be fruitful because your Bible instructs us and the word instructs us to be fruitful and to multiply. Lord, we ask you, we thank you, God, because you're the God of multiplicity. Your word lets us know that you're able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ask or think. We ask you to touch these, your people. Anoint them. Cause them to be productive. Cause them to produce. Cause them to be men and women of God. Give them such a disposition disposition that they are a pleasure to be around. 
a joy to be in their company. Oh God, give them the change their countenance, just like you changed Moses. Give them a spiritual encounter and a spiritual awakening, causing them to be more productive as never before. We rebuke the devourer for your name's sake. And all the nations shall call these your people blessed in the matchless and powerful name of Jesus. If you believe it, say amen and amen. I want you to repeat this in prayer to me. Father, forgive me for I'm a sinner. Create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit in me. I take off the old and put on the new, which is in you. If you're excited that prayer wholeheartedly, I want to let you know that your best days are in front of you. Continue to remain faithful, prayerful, and vigilant. And God will certainly bless you. Amen. Amen. Your best days are in front of you and not behind you. Come worship with us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We have Sunday morning miracle service. We will pray for you and not pray against you or pray on you. We want to see you blessed. We want to see you healed. Amen. At this time we're going to go, but we never dismiss. We speak healing in your life. We speak deliverance in your life. An undeniable display of the power of God in your life. We won't rest until we see you blessed. We love you. We love you. We love you. God bless you.